Hi everyone, this is Tiffany with Raising House and Home. And today I'm going to be doing a lot of different projects around the house that includes dry canning some flour and sugar and rice. And I'm going to show you guys how to do it. And I also wanted to add a little disclaimer that the USDA does not recommend dry canning and there is no official guidebook or guidance on how to do so. I've never experienced any issues with it, so do so with caution and to keep that in mind that um, people have done it safely, but there are also others who are very much against doing it. So please be careful and enjoy. I'm putting all my jars in here in my dishwasher so that I can wash them and sanitize them and get them ready for my dry canning and I could do it by hand but I think it's better to do it this way I feel like it gets cleaner because it's just a higher temperature in the dishwasher and I will also put it in the um, the oven for a little while to make sure it's completely dry on the inside so this is my second batch and I've just got a few more to put in and so that's what I'm working on today just kind of making sure that I'm getting myself ready. It's a little cooler out today. Sorry, you guys. I'll wait until you guys are off the camera because it's really loud. Um, it's a little cooler out today, so it's nice to be able to do a few more chores in the house without worrying about heating up the house. So, on to my next chore. So, here are some of my jars that have been in the dishwasher. They're still a little bit wet, so I'm letting them all just kind of hang out by the uh, window and dry. It's a rainy overcast day, so they might not dry too fast. And I've got all of these circles that I have to, these little fasteners. I don't, what do you call these, I wonder? Not really lids, because they just go on. These are the lids. Whatever. So whatever you want to call these, little twisties. Um, those are ready to go. And then I'll show you what I've been working on over here. This is just a day of projects since it's rainy. I'm actually doing things on the inside instead of outside. Um, I bought these new curtains and I have four panels that I need to be really long and they didn't have short ones for my shorter window that I have over my kitchen um, kitchen sink so I decided to take the end of them and instead of having to sew I just put them up here with safety pins and that's where the curtain rod is going to go through and you won't even know that they are the wrong size and then if we move or if I decide to use these in a different room I can just let them down and we'll have all the same length curtains so it's a nice way to be frugal if I had cut them and sewed them then I wouldn't have that opportunity so this is a nice way and I can also wash them so I can take these off and wash them or I could leave the pins in and wash them. Either way, it'll work. So those are some of my projects that I've been working on and hopefully tomorrow will be a little bit sunnier out because I do have to work in the garden. But I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like after I get all of my things dry canned up. I'm making progress. This is my whole table. And I'm down to my last box of the smaller jars and then I'm gonna open up the big jars. So we're getting there, I'm on my third or fourth round in the dishwasher and then we're going to be moving on to the bigger ones. Hi guys, so we're at the next day. It's no longer rainy, now it's sunny out and I'm working on canning my flour, my sugar, and my rice. I have a lot of pounds. I've probably got like 200 pounds of food that I need to dry can and I wanted to show you how I do it. So this is the big half gallon jars for flour and it's the wide mouth jar and I don't have a funnel. I have one but finding it is another uh, another story. <laughs> so I wanted to show you that you don't always need expensive things to be self-sufficient and I know sometimes it's the cool thing to do or it's not like the the new fad to do um, to go out and purchase all these really expensive things to be self-sufficient and it's it's not always the case so I want to show you I'm just used a paper towel and I folded it into itself and that's what I'm using as a funnel and then I have a little 
old toaster oven um, little sheet pan here that's collecting any of the dust that I might stir up. So I'm going to continue to fill this up and as you can see I have many, 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 many more to do. So I'm going to fill up the dozen of the big half gallons that I have and those will be all flour. I find it's easier to put flour in the big containers than instead of the little ones. So if I have them, I use them and they are going to go in the oven. It just beeped a few seconds ago. It's preheating. And I started out at about 190 and then I kind of go up to 200. And that will help dry can it. Um, and I'll show you what I do and what it looks like when I get done filling them all up. I wanted to show you guys, I thought that this was full. It appeared full with my little paper towel funnel, but when I shook it, you kind of have to see if you can shake it down and get the air bubbles out. You'll see that I have quite a bit more I can put in there. So I'm gonna continue on and just periodically, you know, give it a good shake, pop it up and down the table gently or on the counter gently, and you'll be able to see if um, there's any air in there and kind of compact it down. So I'm going to add some more to it and we'll be back. These are all full. I've got about five in here. There are six of these half gallon jars in a box, but my old sheet pan here is very warped. So I can only fit two on that one safely and three on here. So I'm going to put it at 190 and I'll probably do that for about 25 minutes and then I'm going to put it up to 200 and at the 40 minute mark when it's been in total for 40 minutes um, I will turn off the oven and I'll take them out and put them on a towel on the counter and I'll show you guys what I do once I get to that stage so we're going to close the door and we're going to let this heat up all right so I've done all of these jars right here and then I just took this one out of the oven and I wanted to show you guys how I do it. So I take this, and I have to do this with one hand, so if you guys can forgive me for the shakiness. So I'm taking this little this um, paper towel, and it has vinegar on it. Not, It's not soaked, but you know, just damp. And I'm going to go around the edges here and make sure that any of the flour that might have popped up or any flour dust is off of there. We're gonna set the lid on and we're gonna put this on fingertip tight. Okay, not too awful tight. And I'm gonna leave it on here. I put um, some placemats instead of a towel just because it was easier for me in the kitchen. And I put that down so that, um, cause you never wanna put hot cans or hot jars on like the cool countertop, so I always put a towel or placemats down. So I have this many so far for just for the flour, and it, this is definitely a two to three day process, but it's so worth it. I can't think of anything else in your life that you could give two to three days to that would be more worth having food in storage, especially right now with everything that's going on um, and the uncertainty of a lot of things, including food. So I'm gonna get back to it and I'm hoping to fill up this whole section right here. And then I'll continue on, I can show you. This is gonna be more flour. All of my sugar is done. And then down here is gonna be more flour. And then I have to move on to the rice. So I'm gonna take the rest of them out and I'm gonna do exactly the same thing I just did. You take it out, wipe it down with a vinegar rag, and then put the thing on top and just leave it. Do not touch them or move them. They will start popping if they've been sealed correctly. And they're gonna stay here permanently, but if you're gonna put it on your counter, you wanna put them there for 24 hours. So you don't wanna move them. You put them on the towel, you put the vinegar um, rag around the edge, put the seal on and leave it for 24 hours. And that way nothing comes unsealed and 
and it works great. So I'm on to the next section and I'll show you when I get back. We are on, I think, day four of dry canning. It is a long process, but it's definitely worth it. I had to take some time off of it yesterday afternoon to go out and do some errands. So I'm a little bit behind, but this is Sunday and I do have to do one more errand later on. But for now, I am canning. So I wanted to show you guys that I had two cans that did not seal properly uh, yesterday. So I know some people are worried and nervous about canning. I was too. And they're wondering if they'll be able to tell when it doesn't seal properly. They want everything to be safe. So I wanted to show you how easy it is to tell if something doesn't seal properly. So I think you can see, I'm not sure if my camera will transpose the sides. I know sometimes it flips the image. So the way I'm looking at it right now through my viewfinder, the right side, you can see that there's like a, a button popped up in the middle is like a circle, almost looks like a half moon. And over here, you'll see that it's on the left side, it's a depression, it actually goes in. So I wanted to show you. Now this one, can you hear that? That one did not seal. Now this one, there's nothing to push, it's completely flat, just like that one. So all of these have sealed appropriately, except for the one I just showed you, and then I think it was this one. Can you hear the difference? And then over here, there's absolutely nothing to push, it's completely flat. So I'm gonna redo those two. Um, I still have more large cans to can. Um, of flour, so I'm going to add those to the process. So these are going to be unsealed and I'm going to redo it and see if I can get them to seal. Now sometimes it will be an issue with the jar or the seal itself. So I may just change out the seals and try to find one that works a little bit better. But overall I'm really happy with my progress and I'm going to keep you guys updated as I go along. So my first shelf in the kitchen is completely full of all the jars that I have dry canned. You can see that I was able to get quite a few up top. Ignore my printer, pretend it's not there. I'm still in the middle of pre reorganizing everything um, because I am trying to just go for more functionality and not having it be aesthetically pleasing or to have it look good because right now we're just trying to make it function. Um, so I have these our flour all up top on this shelf. There's more flour. And then that whole middle row is sugar and it goes all the way back. I can show you, maybe. That goes all the way back. And then down bottom is more flour. So I was able to get all of those canned and I had to buy just one more big jar of this singly. And that was hard to find, but I'm glad I was able to find it because um, I have heard that there is starting to be a shortage of cans and canning supplies. So I got that done, and in just a second, I will take you over to the rice. All right, so this is all of the dry canned rice, and I did it the same way. I didn't get it on video because I was really trying to get it done, um, but I did it the same exact way that we did the um, flour, and as you can see, you can't well, that one actually has to be redone. Um, but as you can see, they're, they're sealed. So there's there's these little bugs. I'm sure maybe you guys have heard of them before. They're called weevils. And sometimes you will get them in flour or rice. And I live in the country. So pretty much everything I have has to be sealed anyway so that we don't get the weevils. Um, so when you put these in the oven to heat up, um, they will kill any weevil eggs or any weevils. And then these bags here are small enough that I put them in the eggs as well. So all of this, I can show you all the way down, it's kind of dark over here, but it goes all the way down. And I just didn't have enough cans um, or enough jars for this rice, so I'm just keeping it in the small packages. And I can share these with neighbors or anybody who may be having a hard time finding stuff. And I can also use these, be, use these small bags up uh, before I open up my can jars. And they will last indefinitely because the seal is, is uh, 
very tight it's airtight and so you can keep that for years and years and years and years and this is just an old shelf I had from um, one of the stores I think they were giving it away there's getting you know getting rid of it and it was like a beanie baby I think it was like a Beanie Baby display. So I'm just gonna finish taking off like the stickers and I'll probably make it just a little bit prettier. But for right now, we are in go mode and trying to stock up. So I just wanted to show you what my rice looks like. And I wanna thank you guys for watching. I hope that you learned something from this video and that it helps you feel more confident in your storage uh, processing and that um, you're all doing well and you're healthy and safe and I am so thankful again for all of you that have watched my videos and have subscribed if you haven't subscribed yet please do so and you can also click the bell to get notifications when up I when I put up new videos and thank you guys again I will see you guys real soon bye bye